this video, we will derive the Marshallian demand functions for good one and good two. So uh, as you may know, in theory, the Marshallian demand functions are actually the demand functions that we're accustomed to. So they're the ones that manifest this phenomenon called the law of demand. So uh, in the last video, we uh, derived a few things, which was the marginal utility of good one and good two. We proved non-satiation. We also proved the law of diminishing marginal utility and derived the marginal rate of substitution. So in this video, we're going to use that same function that we used before, but we're going to derive the Marshallian demand functions for good one and good two. And we're going to use the Lagrangian method for that. So building the Lagrangian, build the Lagrangian, okay. Again, we want to maximize utility. We want to maximize utility. So let the Lagrangian, okay, we want to maximize utility. So that's um, x1 alpha, x2 1 minus alpha, subject to our constraint. So let's put our constraint there. So uh, that's going to be m minus p1 x1 minus p2 x2. So this is our objective function. So this is objective function. And this is our constraint. Okay. So we're going to use um, this Lagrangian to be able to derive the Marshallian demand functions for good one and good two. And you'll notice that even though the Lagrangian process is very mathematical in nature, okay, so its assumptions are hinged on math and uh, constraint exhaustion and the like, the underlying steps of it will reveal key parts of our theory that we discussed before. So... Uh, let's uh, let's derive the three okay focs in this Lagrangian, so that's the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to x one, okay, then partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to x two, and then partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to lambda. Okay, and note what we're gonna do is we're all gonna equate these equal to zero. So, deriving the Lagrangian with respect to um, with respect to x1, we get alpha, x1, alpha minus 1. So derive this one first. Then x2, 1 minus alpha, plus lambda times, so let's derive now the constraint with respect to x1. That's just negative p1. Okay, And we're going to equate that equal to 0. Next, we have uh, derive with respect to x2. That's 1 minus alpha x1 raised to alpha, x2 raised to negative alpha, because okay, 1 minus alpha minus 1 is negative alpha, plus lambda times negative p2 equal to 0. And then last, we're going to derive the constraint. So that's just derived with respect to lambda. So we just get our constraint. m minus p1 x1 minus p2 x2 equal to 0. Okay. Then what we're going to do is we're going to solve, okay, solve for lambda in, so let's call this 1, 2, 3, solve for lambda in 1 and 2, okay, so we're going to be, so it's equal to 0, so we can transpose to the other side, so that's um, in 1, we're going to be left with, um, uh, trans, let's transpose this one to the other side, we're left with alpha p1, uh, I'm sorry, lambda p1, that's equal to alpha, x1, alpha minus 1, x2, 1 minus alpha. Then we divide both sides by p1, p1, just to take it out. And we're left with lambda, so a possible value for lambda, alpha, x1, alpha minus 1, x2, 1 minus alpha over p1. So in 2 now, in 2, so we get lambda, uh, we transpose this to the other side, we get lambda p2 equal to 1 minus alpha, x1 alpha, x2 negative alpha. Then divide both sides by p2, p2, take that out. So we're left with lambda equal to 1 minus alpha, x1 alpha, x2 negative alpha over p2. Okay, so uh, then let's equate, equate. Lambda equals lambda, okay? And you'll notice something uh, here. So if we equate the two lambdas, okay, that becomes alpha x1, alpha minus 1, x2, 1 minus alpha, all over p1, 
which is equal to um, 1 minus alpha x2 alpha x2 negative alpha over p2. Okay, and uh, that's actually very interesting because if you notice, this is the marginal utility of good one, and this is the marginal utility of good two. So essentially, what we're getting at is this condition here, okay, is mu1 over p1 is equal to mu2 over p2. And in fact, okay, that's just equal to mrs, okay, 1, 2 is equal to p1 over p2. So we're actually, uh, even though what we did was purely mathematical, that's how to do a typical Lagrangian, we ended up, okay, with our first first order condition, which is that the marginal rate of substitution should equal the price ratio. So it, uh, the solution will eventually, eventually got to that part, okay? But since we, um, w what we can do is we can further simplify this. So we can put it in that form. So let me just uh, go to another, right? So uh, what we can do is, uh, so we can put it in the form MRS12, that's equal to P1 over P2, so P2. And if you recall, we actually computed for MRS before in the last video, but we can do it uh, simply here. So that's just uh, the formula we had earlier, right? So that's alpha x1 raised to uh, 1 minus alpha x2, uh, uh, sorry, sorry, it's alpha minus 1, rather. This is x1 raised to alpha minus 1. Mm, that's alpha minus 1, x2 raised to 1 minus alpha over 1 minus alpha x1 alpha x2 negative alpha. That's going to be equal to p1 over p2. But remember, we simplified this in the last video so we can bring x2 to the numerator and x1 to the denominator and we get alpha x2 over 1 minus alpha x1. It's equal to p1 over p2. So this part here, that's MRS, 1, 2, this is the price ratio, okay? So we can get, okay, we can get intermediate values, immediate values, and how, how do we do that? We can isolate uh, this form here with respect to each good. So say for x2, so uh, we can isolate it, so we get alpha x2 equal to 1 minus alpha x1 p1 over p2. Then dividing both sides by alpha, we get x2 equals 1 minus alpha x1 p1 over alpha p2. Okay, so that's x2 there. Then what we can do is, okay, if you notice, we have a third constraint here, and that's actually our second first order condition. So if you transpose these two to the other side, you're going to get actually that M should be equal to P1X1 plus P2X2, which just which is just our constraint exhaustion assumption. It's our constraint exhaustion FOC that in order for the consumer okay, to maximize his or her utility, they need to exhaust their entire income. So their entire income must be exhausted in that period. So we can use, okay, use m equals p1x1 plus p2x2. If we plug in this intermediate value of x2, we can use it to solve for the Marshallian demand function of good one. So it looks like this. So m is equal to p1x1 plus p2. Then we plug in x2 there, 1 minus alpha x1 p1 over alpha p2, okay? So we have that there. Then we can simplify p2 is here, so we can cancel out the p2 there. We're going to be left with m is equal to p1x1 plus 1 minus alpha over alpha, okay, p1x1. And if you notice, uh, th there's something that we can isolate, so we can do, we can isolate out, factor out x1, so that's x1. That's going to be x1 p1 plus uh, 1 minus alpha p1 over alpha. Okay, and then what we can do is we can just isolate x1 so that we can get the Marshallian for good one. So that's going to be x1 is equal to um, m 
over mm, P1 plus 1 minus alpha P1 over alpha. Simplifying this further, okay, what we can do is we can um, make this all over alpha, right? So we can make it all over alpha. So that's M over uh, alpha P1 plus 1 minus alpha P1 over uh, alpha, okay, in this case. Then uh, to further simplify it, right, what we can do is we can multiply, uh, we can bring this up to the numerator. So we're going to be left with alpha m over alpha p1 plus 1 minus alpha p1, okay? But, you know, simplifying that further, okay, x1 star, so that's going to be the Marshallian. Alpha p p1 plus 1 minus alpha p1, well, that's just going to be equal to alpha p1 plus p1 minus alpha p1. So we cancel out the two alpha p1. So we're going to be left with alpha m over p1. And that's our Marshallian. Okay, so this is our Marshallian demand function for good one. Okay, now... How do we get the Marshallian for good two? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to plug in the Marshallian of good one. Okay, for good one. We're going to plug in that Marshallian demand function of good one to the Marshallian demand function of good two. Okay, to the intermediate value rather that we computed, which is here. So let me write that down. Okay, so that's x2 is equal to, uh, so let's recall that's 1 minus alpha. 1 minus alpha, uh, x1, p1, over p2, okay, plugging in, in the Marshallian demand function of uh, good 2, of good 1, rather, okay, so that's, um, we can get x2 star, which is the Marshallian demand function of good 2, 1 minus alpha, times whatever our x1 star is, okay, x1 star, that's going to be alpha m, over p1, times P1 all over P2, then we can simplify this, okay, we can uh, simplify this, uh, so we have an alpha here, sorry, okay, then we can simplify this, we have this, and then notice the alpha would also cancel out, and we're going to be left with x2 star is equal to 1 minus alpha times m over P2, and this is the Marshallian, uh, Marshallian, demand function for good two, okay, 